So at some point or another, DIYers will need to or want to replace a circuit breaker in their electrical panel. But installing the wrong breaker or installing the right one incorrectly can lead to some very dangerous electrical issues such as arcing, shock, fires, or even possible electrocution. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about proper breaker and improper breaker types. I'm also gonna show you how to easily and quickly replace a standard breaker and at the very same time, talk about and take care of a huge mistake that is very commonly made by DIYers to protect the home from those dangerous situations while also meeting modern electrical codes. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So before we get into how to change out or replace a breaker, I think it is important to quickly talk about what are the proper breakers to use and why. So a huge mistake that a lot of DIYers make is thinking that all breakers are created equal. And I'm not talking about 15 amp versus 20 amp breakers. I'm talking about the different brands and the different types of breakers and where they should be used. First off, you have to make sure you are getting a breaker that is made for your panel. So you need to locate on your panel who the manufacturer is. Another way of possibly figuring this out is by looking at what the brand is of all the other breakers that are in your panel currently. But on top of all of that, there are a few different types of very common breakers that are to be used in certain circumstances and areas. You have your standard breakers, which pretty much everybody knows about as they've been around for pretty much forever. And in my opinion, that is part of the issue that we are talking about as most people really only know of these standard breakers. You also have situations where you need to have breakers such as GFCI breakers, which stands for ground fault circuit interrupter. And then you also have breakers called AFCI breakers, which stand for arc fault circuit interrupter. Now, GFCI breakers are not used nearly as often as the others, as many times GFCI protection is handled through GFCI receptacles that are on your circuits. But AFCIs are now very common practice and are actually required by code to be used in certain circuits in the home. And the reason for this is because AFCI breakers detect dangerous electrical arcs. Now, these arcs occur when wires are damaged, such as frayed cords or loose connections, or possibly even having a nail piercing a wire inside of a wall. And the reason for this is because electrical arcs are one of the leading causes of home fires, but the AFCI breakers can very easily prevent them. Now, the National Electrical Code requires AFCI breakers in areas like bedrooms, living areas, dining rooms, and other living spaces. So pretty much anywhere where it's considered a living space, technically speaking, you now need to have AFCI breakers installed in your panel on those circuits. But now that we have all of that out of the way, now let's get into how a standard breaker is replaced or installed, and I will also be showing how I'm going to go about replacing an incorrectly installed standard breaker with a proper AFCI breaker. All right, so as you can see, these are my two breaker panels, my main breaker panel over there on the right and my sub panel, or this is actually a generator transfer switch, but it is essentially a sub panel as I was able to move a bunch of my circuits out of there and into this sub panel here. But before I get started with doing anything with this, the number one thing we always need to do is make sure that the power is turned off. So you would always need to locate your main disconnect, turn that main disconnect to the off position. All right, so now that my power is off, now I can actually remove the panel cover from my panel. All right, so now that I've got my panel cover off, some of you might be wondering, why am I needing to replace any of these breakers in here? Well, it's not because any of them are bad. It's because like we talked about earlier, there are just some breakers in here that are the incorrect type of breakers. They're all the correct brand, but as you can see, they are all just standard breakers. And if you looked at the panel cover before I took it off, which I'll pull it up here now, as you can see, I've got master, family, I've got kitchen. Those are all living areas and they all require AFCI breakers. But before I get started working in here, I wanna actually verify that everything is dead in here, that there is no current flowing into this particular panel. All right, so as you can see, there's absolutely no voltage whatsoever going into this panel. So now it is safe to work on. So I'm gonna go ahead, start with this breaker right here. So just like that, as you saw, the top rocks out towards you. And then once that's done, 
you're able to pull it out of the circuit breaker panel. And if you're just replacing a circuit breaker, it really is just as easy as unscrewing this lug right here. And you can either use a slotted or flathead screwdriver, but I would really recommend in order to get proper torque on it, using a square drive or also known as a Robertson bit. By using the Robertson, it's just really gonna make everything a lot easier on you. So all we would need to do then is take our screwdriver, put it onto that lug, and then just turn it counterclockwise until the wire is loose enough to come out of the circuit breaker. And so now it's at this point, you would then take your new circuit breaker and just do everything in reverse. You would then take your hot wire, insert it in into that hole underneath of that lug, and then you would just go and tighten it down. Which, something really quickly to note, is with these lugs and really any lugs in an electrical panel, it is actually very important to make sure you are getting them tightened down to the proper torque specs. And every breaker is gonna be different, but if you look at the front or on the sides of pretty much any of your circuit breakers, it's gonna give you all of the information that you would need from what wire sizes can be inserted into it. And then down here at the bottom on this one, it says that this needs to be tightened down to 25 inch pounds. Now, if you know what you're doing and you've got a feel for that. A lot of electricians are not using torque screwdrivers, but for the DIYer, I would really recommend picking one up if you're planning on doing this yourself, because one of the last things you wanna have happen is a wire come loose. And it is very common for wires to be able to come loose if they are not properly tightened down. This particular one has a screen up here on the top, and you can set it to however many inch pounds you need it to read. And once you reach that number, it's actually gonna beep and show you on the screen that you've reached it. And so that way you know that everything is tightened down properly. So just really quickly, I will set this to 25 inch pounds. And now all I need to do is tighten it down and wait for it to beep to let me know that I've got it down properly. All right, so you heard that solid beeping and now my breaker is ready to be installed. Now, if you were starting from scratch, this wouldn't be the only step. You would also need to find the neutral wire for your circuit, land it on the neutral bar, wherever that is in your panel, you'll usually see a bunch of neutral wires attached to it. And then you'll also have the ground wire that needs to be attached to the ground bus bar. And again, you'll see a bunch of bare copper wires or green wires being attached to it. But then at this time, all I need to do in order to install this breaker is again, you see this little cutout here. That's where it rocks and then gets pushed into the circuit breaker panel. So I just need to start with it, find where it gets attached to the bottom there and it's rocking. Then all I need to do is push the top up and in and then it will pop into place just like that. And so it's really just that easy with a standard circuit breaker in order to swap them out or install them. But I need to be replacing these standard breakers with an AFCI, which requires a little bit more than your standard circuit breaker does. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my hot wire again. So what needs to go there is this AFCI breaker here. So in order to do this install, we're gonna need our neutral from the circuit that we are gonna be connecting this to. So you need to make sure that you're getting the neutral wire that is paired with the hot wire that's gonna go into the circuit breaker. But I happen to know that it's this one down here because I've already checked and tested for it. So all I need to do is loosen up that screw in the neutral bus bar, remove that neutral wire. Then I need to take my new AFCI circuit breaker, flip it up to the bottom side, and we're gonna focus on this neutral hole right over here. Again, it usually lines up with the white pigtail in it, and the N on the front is designating this as the neutral side. So then it's just as easy as this, taking that neutral wire that I just removed from the bus bar for this circuit, and actually the exposed copper or lead on this is a little bit too long, so I need to trim it down. And if you didn't know on your circuit breakers, almost all of them are gonna have a strip gauge that you can put your wire up on there and know exactly how much needs to be stripped off. But now that's done, so now I can actually insert that neutral wire into that hole, make sure that it's seated properly, then flip it up here to the front and start tightening down that lug onto that neutral wire. All right, so again, for this circuit breaker, it also says 25 inch pounds. I've still got my torque screwdriver set to 25 inch pounds. And now I just wanna tighten it down until I hear a solid beep. There it is. Give it a little tug. And now this is a little tip. Anytime you're dealing with lugs that a lot of people don't talk about is once you've tightened it down, you've given it a tug that may have moved it just slightly. You wanna go back to it again. Try to tighten it down some more and just make sure everything is still down to the proper torque. 
All right, so my neutral wire from my circuit is now installed into the AFCI. Now I wanna take my hot wire or the wire that's gonna be supplying the power to the circuit that we removed from that original circuit breaker. And now I'm gonna take that wire and we've got our two lugs and holes again. We just wanna flip it up to the bottom side again. And this hot wire is gonna go into this hole that is next to the neutral wire hole. So all I need to do is just insert that in there. And then once that's seated, again, I'm gonna take my torque screwdriver and tighten down that lug onto that hot wire. And then again, wanna make sure that it's tightened down to that 25 inch pounds. So now at this point, what I can do is just like with the standard circuit breaker, it also has a little notch or cutout there. I'm just gonna push that in there, seat it down at the bottom to where it's rocking, just like that. And then all I need to do again is push up on the top and rock it back and pop it into place but there's still one more step that needs to take place. That's where then now I need to take the white pigtail that comes on these AFCI breakers. I need to unspool it. And then once I've got that all unspooled and I got my pigtail completely free, that's where now I'm gonna insert it into my neutral bus bar, which is over here to the side. So I'm just gonna take that copper on that neutral wire, put it underneath of that lug in the neutral bus bar. And then once it's underneath of that lug, that's when then I'll then take my screwdriver. And again, the only ones that will work on these bus bars are a flathead or slotted screwdriver. At this point, everything is connected and wired up properly. Again, for me personally, I have a couple more that I'm gonna need to replace. But at this point, we can go ahead and put our panel cover back on. And now that the panel cover is back on, now we can turn on the main circuit breaker and start supplying power to the panel again. All right, now that we've got power going to the panel again, now I can go ahead and at this point I could turn on all the circuit breakers. But for this video, we're just gonna test this one. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn on our new AFCI circuit breaker. And now we will have power going to whatever circuit that we put that on. Now, something that's very important with these, something that you should probably be doing around once a month with any of your AFCI circuit breakers, and that is this blue button right here. Like your GFCIs, this is a reset button. And it's always good to test this to make sure that the breaker is going to work in the event that there's an arc fault. So all you have to do, just like your GFCIs, is push that blue button. It's gonna trip the circuit breaker and you can see it's in the trip position. It didn't come all the way down and it's still not up in the up position. At this point, you'd wanna go then to the room, make sure that there is in fact no power going to it, which obviously there isn't because it's in a trip position. And then once you've done that, all you have to do then is just reset it back and now you've got power going back to that circuit again. And you now know that your AFCI is in good and working order. And so that's really all there is to this. For me again, I'm gonna have to replace a couple more. I'll do that after the fact. Make sure you're using the proper brand for the board or the panel that you're using. And also make sure that you're using the proper type. So go out to your panel, make sure you've got the proper breakers in your circuit breaker panel, because not only would it be against code not to, but you could also be running a risk of having some potentially very dangerous situations. And for your convenience, like always, I'm gonna have links for everything you saw in this video from different brands of AFCIs and standard breakers and all of the tools that I use in this video. I have links for everything down in the description down below. So when you click on those links, it will take you directly to whatever you clicked on so you can check it all out for yourself. Now, really quickly, if you found value in this video, then you will definitely find value in a couple of other videos that I've done on very similar subjects. In about a week, I will be publishing a video covering some of the most common and biggest mistakes that DIY wires make when working on their circuit breaker panel and their circuit breakers. This really is a subject that is so important but is rarely covered. And these are going to be about mistakes that most DIYers are not aware that they are even doing. So once that video is out, I will post that video right over here, but I will also post a related video right down here as that will probably also be of interest to you. So all you have to do is click on whichever one of these interests you the most and it will take you directly to it. But I hope that you found value in this video. And if you did, if you do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one.